The scene is a drawing room. Design and colour in exotic. Late afternoon. The earnest young woman sits nervously on the edge of a gilt chair in very modest frock hat and furs. It is plain she has been sitting there a long time, palpably frightened. Now and then she licks her lips as if her mouth was dry. At last, the famous actress enters through the curtain door which leads to her boudoir. You wish to see me? <coughs> uh, yes. What can I do for you? Give me back my husband. Give you back your husband? Yes. <coughs> You're wondering which one he is. He's, he's blonde, not very tall, wears spectacles. He's a lawyer. Your manager's lawyer, and his name is Alfred. Oh, I have met him. Yes. I know you have, and I beg you, give him back to me. You mustn't mistake my silence for embarrassment. I'm at a loss because uh, I don't quite see I can give you back your husband when I haven't got him to give. You just admitted that you knew him. That scarcely implies I've taken him from you. Of course I know him. He drew up my last contract and it seems to me I've seen him once or twice since then. Backstage? A rather nice-spoken ferret man. Did you say he wore spectacles? Yes. Don't remember him with spectacles. He probably took them off. He he wanted to look his best for you. He he's in love with you. He doesn't love me. He he doesn't care how he looks when I'm around. And I beg you, give him back to me. If you want such a very foolish young woman, I should be very angry with you. Wherever did you get the idea that I've taken your husband from you? He sends you flowers all the time. That's not true. It is. It isn't. He never sent me a flower in all his life. Uh, did he tell you he did? No, I found out at the florists. The flowers are sent to your dressing room twice a week and charged to him. That's a lie. Do you mean to say I am lying? I mean to say that someone is lying to you. And and, and what about this, this letter? Letter? He wrote it to you and, and he, he said... He wrote it to me? Let me see. Uh, no, I'll read it to you. My darling, shan't be able to call for you at the theatre tonight. Urgent business. A thousand apologies, ten thousand kisses. Alfred. Oh. I, I found it on his desk this morning. He probably intended to send it to the theatre by messenger, but he forgot it and... And I opened it. Oh, you mustn't cry. <laughs> you steal my husband and I mustn't cry. How easy it is for you. You have cosmetics to redden your lips and darken your eyelashes and bright lights that make you look glamorous and an author's lines that make you sound witty. One night you dress like a royal princess and the next night you undress like a Greek goddess. No wonder my poor lawyer husband falls for you. What chance have I in my cheap frock? No makeup, just my own simple ways. And I can't strut and pose. When it comes to alluring men, I am no match for you. This is a very interesting case. What is? Yours. Mine? What do you mean? I mean that I've never received a flower or a letter or anything else from your husband. Tell me, haven't you and your husband been getting on rather badly of late? Yes, of course. You used to be very affectionate to each other? Why, yes. And of late you've been quite cold? Yes. Of course. A typical case. Uh, my dear, if you knew how often we actresses meet this sort of thing, uh, it is perfectly clear that your husband has been playing a little comedy to make you jealous, to revive your interest in him. Do you really think that? Do you mean to say that such a thing has happened to you before? Endless times. It is one of the oldest tactics, and we actresses are such easy targets. 
There's scarcely a man connected with us yet who doesn't take advantage of us to regain a wife or sweetheart's affection. All they have to do is invent a love affair with one of us, and the wife is always so ready to believe it. Uh, usually, we don't know a thing about it, but when it is brought to our notice, we don't really mind. Uh, we have the consolation of knowing we are the means of making a marriage happy, which might otherwise have ended in a divorce court. Uh, but how? How could I know? Oh, there, dear. You mustn't apologize. You couldn't know, of course. Uh, you imagine your husband in a backstage world of beautiful sirens who have no scruples or morals. You think one actress is more dangerous than a hundred ordinary women and you hate and fear us. No one understands that better than your husband who is evidently a very cunning lawyer. He plays on your insecurity to win back the love you deny him. He leaves a love letter on his desk for you to find. Lawyer would never do that unintentionally. He orders flowers for me on the telephone in the morning and cancels the order the moment he reaches his office. By the way, hasn't he a lock on my hair? Uh, yes, in, in his desk drawer. I brought it with me. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, they bribed my hairdresser. It's a wonder I have any hair left at all. Uh, oh, is that how he got it? I can't imagine how else. Tell me. Has he left any of my love letters lying around? Uh, uh, no. Oh, don't be alarmed. I haven't written him any. Then what made you... Uh... I might have if he come to me and said, um, I say, Sarah, will you do me a favour? My wife and I aren't getting on too well. Uh, would you write me a passionate love letter? so I can leave it lying around for her to find. I'd have done it, written a letter to make you sob into your pillow for a fortnight. I wrote ten like that for an eminent playwright once, but he had no luck with them. His wife was such a proper person, she returned them all to him unread. How clever you are, and oh, and how good! I'm neither better nor worse than any other girl in the theatre even though you do consider us such monsters. Been a perfect fool. Well, you do look a bit silly, standing there with tears in your eyes and your face glowing with happiness because you've discovered that a little blonde man with spectacles loves you after all. My dear, no man deserves to be adored as much as that. Uh, but then it's your own affair, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yet, I want to give you a parting bit of advice. Uh, don't let him fool you like this again. He won't, never fear. No matter what you may find in his pockets, letters, handkerchiefs, uh, photos, no matter what flowers he sends or letters he writes, uh, don't be taken in a second time. You may be sure of that. Oh, um, you won't say anything to him about my coming here, will you? Not a word. I'm angry with him for not being honest and asking me for permission to use my name in the way he did. Oh, you are a dear. I don't know how to thank you. Oh, now you mustn't begin crying all over again. You've made me just so very happy. All right, Alfredo. You can come in an hour. She has gone. A Matter of Husbands by Ferenc Molnar, directed by Julie Mason. In A Matter of Husbands, the famous actress was played by Alexandra Knight and the earnest young woman by Christine Kavanagh.